Hi guys! Today we're going to look at how we can use scriptable objects to store data as an asset, which can then be used by multiple game objects. We'll be adding this to the 2D top-down shooter series we've been building. You can download this project and all the others in the series by supporting us on Patreon. We've also now upgraded the project to use Unity 6. If you started the project with an older version of Unity, we have a dedicated video highlighting the differences and showing you how to upgrade. All the links you need can be found in the description. Ok, if we look in the hierarchy while the game's playing, we can see that we have lots of enemies. If we select one of these, we can see various attributes of the enemy in the inspector. If we select another enemy, we can see the exact same values again. All of these values have to be stored in memory. Because the attributes of each enemy are the same, we're storing the same value over and over again, which is not an efficient use of memory. This is where scriptable objects come in. We can extract these values into a scriptable object asset that can then be shared between all of the enemies. This way, the values are only stored in memory once. To do this, we need to define the scriptable object in a script. We'll go to the enemy script folder and add a new script. We'll call this enemy attributes. Then we'll double click to open it in the editor. Rather than deriving from mono behaviour, we need to derive from scriptable object. We also need to add the create asset menu attribute to the class to allow assets of this type to be created. This attribute allows us to provide the default file name for created assets. For this, we'll specify enemy attributes. So now, whenever we create a type of this scriptable object, the initial name of the file will be enemy attributes. We also need to specify the menu name for creating the scriptable object. For this, we'll specify scriptable objects forward slash enemy attributes. This is what will be shown on the menu in Unity to allow us to create an instance of the scriptable object. Now we just need to define the enemy attributes. We'll delete the default methods and add in public properties for each attribute. We'll start with speed. We'll make the setter private so that the value can't be changed. To allow the value to be set from the inspector, we need to add the serialize field attribute. This attribute is designed to work on fields, not properties though. To make this work, we need to specify that we want to target the backing field of the property. Then we'll do the same for all the other enemy attributes. We'll add one for rotation speed. Then we'll add one for health. Next we'll add one for the player awareness distance. Then we'll add the kill score. And we'll add one for the amount of damage the enemy does.
will add one for the chance of collectible drop. For this one, we'll also add an attribute to tell the inspector that this value has a range of 0 to 1. Then we'll add the screen border. Finally, we'll add the attributes for the obstacle avoidance. We'll add the obstacle check circle radius. Then we'll add the obstacle check distance. Finally, we'll add the obstacle layer mask. Now we've defined a scriptable object that has all the attributes for the enemy. Let's save this and switch back to Unity to make use of it. We're now going to create an instance of our enemy attributes scriptable object. We'll go to the Assets folder in the Project panel and create a new folder. We'll name this Scriptable Objects. Then we'll double click to open the folder. We'll create another folder called Enemy. We'll go into this folder and click the plus button. We can now see the scriptable object menu we specified. We'll click to create an instance of the enemy attributes. We'll leave the file name as the default we specified. Now we can set all the desired values in the inspector. We'll set these to the attributes of the normal enemy. We'll set speed to 1, rotation speed to 100, Health to 10, Player Awareness Distance to 5, Kill Score to 10, Damage Amount to 10, and Chance of Collectible Drop to 0 0.3. We can see that this has a slider because we specified the range. We'll set Screen Border to minus 30, Obstacle Check Circle Radius to 0 0.45, Obstacle Check Distance to 1 and the Obstacle Layer Mask to Default. Now we have the attributes defined, we need to update our other scripts to make use of the scriptable object. We'll go to the Enemy Movement script. Then we'll add a serialised field for the enemy attributes. We'll now use this for the enemy attributes rather than the existing serialised fields. We'll delete all of these fields. Then we'll find the broken usages of these and change them to get the values from the scriptable object.
We'll follow the same pattern for the other scripts. We'll go to the player awareness controller and change it to use the scriptable object for the player awareness distance. We'll remove the existing field. Then we'll add the field for the enemy attributes. Finally, we'll make use of the player awareness distance on the scriptable object. Next, we'll go to the enemy score allocator. We'll change it to get the kill score from the scriptable object. Then we'll go to the enemy attack script. We'll change it to make use of the damage amount in the scriptable object. Next, we'll go to the enemy collectible drop script. We'll do the same for the chance of collectible drop value. That's nearly all the attributes set. The only one we haven't set is the health. This one is a bit trickier, as the health controller is shared between the player and the enemy, so we can't just customise it for the enemy. Instead, we'll create a public method to set the health to a specific value. Let's go to the health controller script to do this. We'll create a public method called setHealth. We'll take the desired amount as a parameter. Then we'll set the current health to this value. We'll check if the current health is now above the maximum. If it is, we'll set it to the maximum. Finally, we need to trigger the on health changed event. Now we have a method we can call to set the health to a specific value. The next thing we need to do is create another script to call this and set it to the value defined in the scriptable object. We'll click this button to save all the files and then we'll switch back to Unity. We'll navigate to the Enemy Scripts folder. Then we'll click the plus button and add a new script. We'll call this Enemy Spawn Controller. We'll double click to open this in the editor. We'll add a serializable field for the enemy attributes. We'll also add a private field for the health controller. Then we'll add the awake method. In here we'll get a reference to the health controller component and assign it to the field. Then in the start method, we'll call the new set health method on the health controller.
we'll pass in the health value from the enemy attributes. This will set the health of the enemy to the correct value when it spawns. Finally, we'll remove the update method as we don't need it. Then we'll save the script and switch back to Unity. We need to add this new script to the enemy prefab. We'll navigate to the prefabs folder and select the enemy. In the inspector, we'll click Add Component. Then we'll search for the enemy spawn controller script and click to add it. Next, we need to assign the enemy attribute scriptable object to each component. We'll go through each one and click the target icon in the enemy attributes field. We've only created one so far, so we'll select the only option. Then we'll do the same for all the other components. Now we've got everything set up for the standard enemy. We now need to create different attributes for the strong enemy. We'll navigate to the enemy scriptable objects folder. Then we'll click the plus button and select scriptable objects enemy attributes. We'll rename this strong enemy attributes. Then we'll set all the attribute values for the strong enemy. We'll set speed to 0.8, rotation speed to 50, health to 30, player awareness distance to 4, kill score to 20, damage amount to 20, chance of collectible drop to 0.5, screen border to minus 30, obstacle check circle radius to 0.45, Obstacle check distance to 1, and the obstacle layer mask to default. Next, we need to assign this to the strong enemy prefab. We'll go to the prefabs folder. Then we'll select the strong enemy prefab. In the inspector, we'll override all the enemy attributes with the new strong enemy attributes. Let's press play to try this out. Everything plays exactly the same as before, but the game will now use less memory and it's also much easier to change the enemy attributes all in one place. Another good candidate for scriptable objects is the settings for the spawners. We'll save this for a future video though, as that's probably enough refactoring for one day. In the next video in this series, we'll add a new collectible that gives the player a period of invincibility. If you want to be alerted when this one's out, then subscribe and click the bell icon. If you have any questions or feedback on this video, let us know in the comments. A big thank you to all our patrons, we really appreciate you helping to support the channel. If you'd like to help and also get access to the source code, you can find details in the description. Thanks guys.